Okay, we'll actually start doing some kinematic equation stuff. So I already showed you guys the four or the three kinematic equations, so I don't think I have to do that. Do you want me to write them back up there? Okay, they're up higher in the notes anyway, and you guys should have them written in your notes too. So we're going to use these kinematic equations today uh, to try to solve some problems that we might not have already been able to solve before. Um, and the first one I'm going to go with is trying to use gravity to our advantage. Um, so the one where we drop something. Oh, you're right. We can. You're right. So further up in the notes, there was a part where we had a, a thing where we did not know what the, uh, let's see if I can go back up to it. There's the frowny face. We couldn't make a distance versus time graph for it because this part was curving, right? But we might actually have enough information to use a kinematic equation to be able to solve for it. Um, let's see if we can actually do that and pick it apart. Because um, remember, we've got to have, in our kinematic equations, we've got to have dVAT. So VI, VF, A, and T. So we've got to have as many of these as we possibly can. And if we can get some of that information, then we're good to go. Um, from zero to three seconds on that kinematic equation, it's curving, so I can't really get like a constant speed. Uh, I don't know, because it goes faster and faster from zero seconds to three seconds. But uh, how f the, initial the, the initial what? The initial velocity? All right, so zero meters per second. No, you can't say at least there is no. It's a displacement versus time graph. You can't find the velocity from a displacement versus time graph. So I'm going to write a question mark there. Uh, we don't specifically know what the acceleration is, right? So we don't know that one. We do know how long it took, though. So how long did it actually take to go? Uh, how about three seconds, Chief? Because, <laughs> you know, whenever you look at the thing, and there's a three right here for the time, and it says three. You're look, are you looking at this one? That's displacement. So the y-axis is displacement. So we can say that our displacement is negative 4 meters. That goes under the d of the dVAT. Okay? So we've got vi, we've got d, and we've got t. We need to look at our equations and see if we can actually uh, solve an equation that has d, vi, and t. So let's go back down to the kinematic equations. Uh, there they are. So the first one doesn't have D inside of it, so that's probably not a good idea. Uh, the second one doesn't have T in it, so that's probably not a good idea. Uh, our only hope is going to be to look at this bottom one, okay? That has no final velocity in it. Well, that's great. We didn't get final velocity from our graph. So that means that we're going to probably need to pick this bottom kinematic equation, the one that says D is equal to VIT plus one-half AT squared. So that is the one that we're going to use. I'm going to write that one down here because I didn't have any room up there to write it. So displacement equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. Uh, our displacement from that graph was negative 4 meters. Our velocity times time was zero. So this whole thing, instead of writing it down, I'm just going to put a big arrow and put zero there. So the only thing that's left is one half acceleration times three seconds squared. Okay. So this means that I can actually solve for what the acceleration is. And if I can solve for the acceleration, I can find the final velocity. It just counts up by that many numbers as we would go along. So um, algebra time. What, what should I do? <laughs> we're, we're good now. Uh, what should I do first? It's, it's, do what? Exponent. Okay, we're going to take that 3 and let's go ahead and square it. So that's negative 4. And I'm going to get rid of the units. 1 half A times 9. Because 3 seconds squared is going to be 9 seconds squared. So, and I know this equation is dimensionally accurate, so I'm just going to ignore the units and be okay. I'm sure there's some people that, there are some physicists somewhere that are screaming at me, but whatever. I can deal with the voices in my head. What next? Okay, multiply everything by. You have two options. There's 
Okay. I guess that's a, that's a third option. Uh, so half of 9 is 4.5, right? Okay, so 4.5 times A is equal to negative 4. And let's just divide. Yeah, so our acceleration is going to equal negative 4 divided by 4.5, which is some kind of number. Looks like it's less than 1. Negative what? Negative 0.8 repeating. So let's do negative 0.89. Uh, meters per second squared. Meters per second squared. So since we've got our acceleration, we know this thing is going to be speeding up in the negative direction. Uh, we are starting at, so if we made a, I think the best way to describe this is if we made a velocity time graph, then this thing would be starting with a zero velocity. I'm going to write V here, write T here. So we're starting with a zero velocity and then moving down. So every second that ticks by, we gain the same amount of velocity. So every second that ticks by, we're going to gain negative 0.89 meters per second. So after the first second, it would be negative 0.89. After the second second, it would be um, negative, eight point, or negative 0.89 times 2. And after the third second, it would be negative 0.89 times 3. And then, and then we're done. Then we have our final velocity. Okay. So our final velocity by this graph would be negative 2.67. I'm going to go tens place. I'm going to say negative 2.7 meters per second. Okay. The other way to do that, um, because using that velocity time graph is pretty much using one of the kinematic equations. So if you don't like that graph and you're like, uh, I don't know, Chief, this is not really how we do this. Uh, you can use uh, VF equals VI plus AT, and you can solve it like it's an algebra problem, and it'll give you the same answer because the initial velocity is zero, uh, the acceleration is 0.89, and the time is three seconds. So your final velocity is just going to end up being 0.89 times three, which gives you negative 2.7. So either one of these is fine. Um, Right. So we had to get the acceleration first. Okay. We couldn't use the second kinematic equation until we used the first kinematic equation before it. So we had to find acceleration first. And then from there, your options are either to make a little quick sketch of a velocity time graph, since you know it's a constant acceleration, that's going to be a, a straight line either up or down. And you can use that to basically calculate the, uh, uh, what would that be? Velocity versus time graph, we're trying to find the final velocity. Oh, we're just literally multiplying it out to find that point. Um, so it's literally the acceleration times the time to find that final velocity. I was thinking area under the curve or slope, but it's actually neither one of those. You're just looking for what that point is at the end. Um, okay, so that would be, now that we have that problem, now that we have the kinematic equations, we can solve for what that said previously on the graph. We can find the acceleration, and we can also find the final speed of that acceleration. The kinematic equations, the kinematic equations are very powerful, very powerful indeed. Okay, um, now there is a fourth kinematic equation, and if you'll find the fourth kinematic equation, I can write it up there. But keep in mind, the fourth kinematic equation is not on the formula sheet. So if you rely on the fourth kinematic equation, you have to memorize it, okay? There is a fourth one, but for some random reason, they do not put it on the formula sheet. So Google away. Uh, we have a displacement one, but there might be a second one. Does it involve a one-half? That's it, yeah. So is that a multiply there? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. That is the fourth kinematic equation. And this one might be helpful to you, but warning, it might not, uh, it, it's definitely not going to be on the formula sheet. So it's going to be, be I don't, because the AP physics people decided, hey, we're not going to give this to these people. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Um, so the distance is equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2 multiplied by the time. So all of this thing 
is multiplied by the time. Okay, that equation can be used, and I will let you guys use it, but keep in mind this is not on the formula sheet. So if you're going to use it, memorize it. Or have it written down or something. Just literally tattoo it on there and be like, this is artistic uh, expression. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to say, to be honest. I don't even know if it's going to be in person this year. I don't know. I don't know anything. So. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> and a zero. How do you get a zero on an AP physics test or an, on an AP test? Just... Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't even realize that zero was a thing. I thought ones were, ones were it. I thought so. <laughs> That's what I thought anyway. All right, let's do a different example. So we can use this in physical situations as well. And you're going to see this kind of example a lot where you have an object that's on a ramp and gravity just kind of does the job of pulling the object down the ramp. So I'm going to make this object a square so that it doesn't roll. Because Fine, I'm going to make this a rectangle so that it doesn't roll. And I'm going to say that this object starts, well, whenever you start it, we'll just say that we just put it there and then we let it go. So at the very beginning, this initial velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second. And then technically it could, yeah, it could actually tumble down. Uh, but we're just going to assume that this is a very low friction ramp and that it just slides. Okay, if you see a box, you can automatically assume on the AP physics test that that box is not going to rotate because they do not give you the equations for the center of mass of a box and you don't want to see it. Uh, it's not good, uh, especially if it's a rectangle. You really don't want to see that. Uh, at the very end, we don't necessarily... Oh, you know what? Let's say that we get a final velocity of uh, 6 meters per second, which is about 12 miles per hour. So it slides and it gets a little bit of speed to it. We're going to need one more piece of information uh, in order to be able to find the acceleration. Let's say that it takes these six seconds, and let's say that the amount of time that it takes to do this is um, 5.3 seconds. I don't know why. I don't know why I did a point three. I'm sorry. I just kind of made that up off the top of my head. So it's going to be sliding, it's going to go to 6 meters per second, and then it's going to reach that 6 meters per second in 5.3 seconds. Do we have enough information? Let's look at the DVAT, and let's see if we have enough. Okay, so I'm going to write out D, V, I, V, F, A, T, DVAT. Okay, do we have the distance? No. We might be able to find it, yeah. Do we have the initial velocity? Yeah, zero meters per second. Okay, and do we have the final velocity? Okay, six meters per second. Uh, do we have the acceleration? Crap. Uh, do we have the time? Okay, so we have three of these things. So if we can fit these into our kinematic equations, V, I, V, F, and T, we should be able to solve for... Um, the, either the acceleration or the displacement. Using our fourth kinematic equation that you guys see in the top right in red, that one actually looks like a really good candidate here uh, because it's got VI, VF, and T, uh, and we just happen to have VI, VF, and T. So why don't we use that one? Unless y'all want to hurt yourselves. No, we're not going for the pain train? Yeah, the new guy, the D equals VI plus VF over 2 times time. Yeah, let's do that one. This is the, yeah, the, using the red equation is the non-pain train way. Uh, if you did not have that equation, we would have to mix two of the equations together through substitution and make a demon hybrid baby, and we would have to actually get that to work out. It's doable without it. It's just basically you'd be getting to that equation anyway. A demon hybrid baby? It's like, I'm sorry, we're just going to make a demon hybrid baby. It's fine. No big deal. Um, yeah, ignore the summoning ritual. Let's see here. So D 
is equal to uh, VI plus VF is going to be 0 plus 6 divided by 2 times 5.3 divided by 2 plus 5.3. Come in. It's open. Okay, um, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Did anybody do this part? Okay, so it's 6 over 2 times 5.3, which is 3 times 5.3, which is 15.9 meters. Okay, now that we've got this, I'm going to go ahead and write that in the DVAT. So I'm going to get rid of my question mark, and I'm going to write 15.9 in there so that I'm really terrible at... Um, if I find a number and I don't write it up in the DVAT, I just like automatically forget that that number exists. And if I needed to use it later on, eh, whatever, I just kind of just forget about it. Um, now that we've got the D and VI and VT, or sorry, VI and VF, we can find the acceleration. Uh, and you kind of have your pick on which kinematic equation you want to use because you've got everything except the acceleration. So you can use any of the kinematic equations. Which one? V over T. Okay, so it's going to be VF equals VI plus AT, right? I don't like using the delta V over delta T. So the way that I like to write it is VF equals VI plus AT. And we have all of these except for the acceleration, so we should be good to go. Um, the final velocity is 6. The initial velocity is 0. The acceleration is, I don't know. And the time is 5.3 seconds. So it's really just 6 divided by 5.3. It's just velocity over time, right? Okay. The reason why I don't like using velocity over time is because sometimes this VI is an actual number. So, like, if it's you start at 6 and then it goes to, um, or if it starts at 2 and then goes to 6, your VI will not be 0. So, I don't like just using velocity over time because sometimes people get confused if they do it that way. But if you do VF equals VI plus AT, it'll work every time. Okay because you'll have an initial velocity and a final velocity. So when we divide those two numbers onto each other, we get the acceleration is 1.13. OK, 1.13 meters per second squared. OK, so these kinematic equations are super helpful because these kinematic equations will give us the ability to be able to um, calculate any of the missing variables as long as you have the right ones. Uh, and with the fourth kinematic equation, there's not a combination that they could give you that would be bad unless they don't give you enough information. Uh, a couple of things to remember is that if an object is falling, free falling, straight down, then the acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8. So they may not give that to you in a problem, but if they say that it drops or falls, you can safely assume that that acceleration is negative 9.8. If an object is on a ramp like this, obviously the ob acceleration is not going to be 9.8 because the ramp slows it down during that process. The acceleration is actually less for reasons that we'll get into later. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. Different example. How about, um, let's do one where there is, is actually falling involved. So let's, uh, let's jump out of an airplane. That seems reasonable, right? Yeah, there's an airplane. The wing's a little big, but... So you're jumping out of an airplane. This is an airplane, right? So yeah, the, the literal airplane just falls out of the ground, uh, falls to the ground. If there was no air resistance, the airplane would just flat out fall to the ground, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, pretend that this problem is only works for like this person. So we're going to ignore air resistance for this guy. And at the very beginning, let's say that this plane is moving this way at 250 meters per second. Okay, so they're actually moving across at 250 meters per second. And what we're really going to be interested in is we're going to say um, 
how let's see what information is easy to get whenever you're falling out of a plane is it easy to get the distance that you fell can you ask the pilot how high he is in altitude right so we could get the distance we could get how high we are right so let's say we ask the pilot and we're like hey pilot how far am i falling from and they happen to uh not be an uh, freedom unit pilot and they're like all right so you're about hmm, 2500 meters above the ground which is really high um so say we're yeah say we're about 2.5 kilometers above the ground 2500 meters so that's really high and you're like okay this is might be a little bit of a problem and since we're ignoring air resistance uh let's look at our dvat what would our vi be ah yeah so like really we're interested in how far we're falling right so the vertical direction is very different from the horizontal direction so even though this thing is moving at 250 meters per second our vi is going to be zero meters per second so since we're dealing with th this change let's go ahead and do this for the vi i'm going to put vi y okay because that means that that's the initial velocity in the y direction and if i don't put viy i'm going to get confused i'm going to be like well wait a minute isn't the airplane moving because i'll get halfway through the problem and then confuse myself because that's how i roll okay so do we know the final velocity that one's going to be hard right that one's going to be hard to calculate we don't know yet so v f y is going to be equal to i don't know um are we on earth If there is a question mark on there, you can easily put, I don't know in that spot and I won't hit you with a broom. That's okay. Um, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time is, don't know. You don't know. No, we can't make up one because we've already locked in that we're traveling 2,500 meters. And if we're traveling 2,500 meters and we've locked in an acceleration, we should have a specific amount of time that we're going to travel, okay? Which means that we should be able to solve this using the D, the VI, and the A. And hopefully there's a kinematic equation that will work for us. So let's think about it. Um, what I'm going to do... I'm just making these things up. I don't know if it's an answer or not. We may have to have more information. So there's VF equals VI plus AT. I'm just right. I'm just going to quickly write down the kinematic equations. VF squared equals VI squared plus two AD. And there's also D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. If you do this for years, then you can <laughs> have these memorized. They're just seared into my memory. Uh, VF plus VI divided by two times the time. Since y'all looked that one up on Google, I'll go ahead and put that one there too. Let's look at the top one. So VF equals VI plus AT. Um, do we have enough stuff there to be able to figure it out? Okay, yeah, I think y'all are right. We don't have VF, right? And we don't have T. So that's two things that we don't know. That's not good. So let's not use that equation yet. So I'm just going to put an X there. Um, actually, X is a letter, so I'm going to change that. Um, frowny face is not a symbol used in algebra, so let's put a frowny face there. Um, what about VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD? We do not have VF. We do have VI. We do have A, we do have D, so I think, I th yeah, I think we can do the second one. I think the second one is going to be the way to go. So let's try that one. We can at least get final velocity, and then from there, we can probably find time. So let's do that one. That one's a smiley face. So um, let's see here. VF squared, that's going to be I don't know squared. Great. Equals uh, VI squared, which is zero. Thank you. Um, I better just go ahead and write zero there. Zero squared plus two times negative 9.8 times time 
no, D, uh, 2,500. There we go. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And I can get rid of the zero squared, and then I can multiply those numbers out, and that should give me final velocity, right? So VF equals... Oh, we do have to square root, so we're going to put a squared there. And that's going to be, I don't know, what are all three of those numbers multiplied together? Negative 49,000. Okay, now something terrible is getting ready to happen, okay? Your, yeah, your uh, acceleration is negative, right? But there's something that we didn't quite think about. Did we start at a place above and then, because your velocity, whenever it comes down to it, when you take the square root, you should never get an imaginary number. You shouldn't try to put this into the calculator and it explode. So you have two options. One of the options is you can just scratch out that negative and say, ha, that doesn't exist. Or you can say, well, wait a minute. I started off at a higher location and I am moving down to a lower location. Isn't that a negative displacement? Didn't we agree that down is negative? Didn't we fall? So 2,000 should, or 2,500 shouldn't be positive 2,500. If we fell 2,500 meters, that should actually be negative 2,500. And that's the way that I like to think about it rather than just pretending that the negative doesn't exist. So now you get a negative times a negative, and that is actually a positive, so you're not going to blow up the calculator. So do the final velocity is equal to the square root of 49,000, which gives you a number that is somewhere between 1 and infinity. 221.3 or 221.4. Yeah, 221.4 meters per second. So if there was no air resistance and you were just falling out of a plane, by the time you made it down to the bottom, you would be traveling at 221 meters per second. If you want to get a rough estimate for how fast that is, you can multiply that by 2, and that's your miles per hour. So if you didn't have air resistance, you would be going 442 miles per hour, which is no, not good, Chief. You're almost going the speed of sound. Okay. Fortunately for us, the terminal velocity, since there is air resistance and it pushes us up, we actually travel a lot slower than that if you're actually falling out of an airplane. You eventually reach some top speed, and then you just keep going that speed. So... Uh, in this case, if you were falling in out, of, out of, okay, well, yeah, this kind of would be some, like, grand value seppuku here, because, like, think about it. Like, if you're thinking about the physics of the situation, um, my problem doesn't make any sense whatsoever, because if there was no air resistance, the airplane wouldn't be flying in the first place, and if you open the parachute, there was no air resistance to push it back, and you just fall in splat and hit the ground. So, yeah, like, if you really think about the physics of no air resistance, this problem shouldn't even be here in the first place. You would hit the ground exceptionally hard and it would not be fun for you. Well, uh, it, it might the fall might be fun, but that last fraction of a second, no bueno. I, I'm not really sure if you would actually feel it or not. Uh, I'm not going to run that experiment and find out one way or the other, though, so I have no idea. Um, there is one more thing that we can find, though. We can find how long it would take us to do that. So we can find the time using a different kinematic equation. Um, let's take our picks again so we can see there's a frowny. I'm going to get rid of the frowny and the smiley face now. So, well, the DVAT, the VF is 221.4. So I'm going to erase that and write 221.4 meters per second. And I think time is not allowed to be negative. Why would time be negative? How'd you get a negative? No, they're not. Uh, did you do the Did you do the top equation? Okay, well, watch this. Well, let's do the top equation. Okay, the top equation is here's the problem. We assume that we're going a positive velocity. Wait a minute, isn't positive up? So really, we're going negative 221.4 meters per second. And no, that is not what the square root told you, but we have to just look at the physical situation and we have to say, okay, we are going down. So down is going to be a negative, which means when we do this in the, in the formula, our time should actually end up being positive. So when we do VF equals VI plus AT, 
Um, that's 221, negative 221.4 equals zero plus negative uh, 9.8 times time. So you're just dividing it by 10, right? So what'd y'all get? 22 point. So that would be a very lovely 22.6 second fall. When you fall out of an airplane, it actually lasts a lot longer than that because you're not constantly speeding up to that speed. You eventually reach a top speed and then you just kind of coast down to the ground. But if there was no air resistance, it would only take 22 seconds because as you keep speeding up, you just go faster and faster and faster. And uh, if you didn't know that you could cover 2.2 kilometers or 2,500 meters in 22 seconds, if you fall, you can. Really hard to run, but if you fall, you can. Do I have any time left? Am I out? I have three minutes. That is probably not enough time to start another problem. So tell you what, we will try to tackle some more of these tomorrow. And then over the weekend, I'll uh, let loose the homework on you guys. So...